Hello and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks and in today's lesson I'm going to first demonstrate how to use Excel's Auto Fill tool to quickly increment a series of dates. Next I'm going to demonstrate how to use formulas so that if your beginning date, if your starting date changes, then all of the other dates in the series that use the formulas will update automatically. Alright, let's first talk about Auto Fill. Monday is one of the days of the week. The days of the week is a list that is built into Excel and we can use this to our advantage when we want to use the autofill tool. When we want to autofill, move your mouse down to the lower right corner of the cell that's your starting cell and then just simply drag in the direction that you wish to autofill release the mouse and when I demonstrate this in class people will say Danny that's great except look it includes Saturday and Sunday and I don't want that in my my list for time cards so this isn't going to save me time well yes it is because pay attention over here you see this little icon that appears when I release my mouse it's called the autofill options and when we click on the menu we see that one of our autofill options is to fill the series with weekdays only so now Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday no Saturday and Sunday and then I begin the next week now another way that you can autofill and again remember that autofill always begins in the lower right corner is that instead of using your the left button on your mouse if you use the right button on your mouse notice that your mouse cursor changes into a white arrow and what I like about this is that the menu pops up automatically so let's choose the same autofill option to fill the weekdays only now when we go to autofill an actual date notice that with the autofill options that we have several additional choices so in addition to filling the weekdays only notice that I could fill the months or fill the years let's see what filling months looks like so now the seventh month July becomes the eighth month August becomes the ninth month September etc notice that the autofill stays in place the options let's see what filling the years does so now we increment the series 2011 to 2012 2013 2014 there's also another uh, nice feature over here called fill the formatting only so let's just say that I put in here a date 752011 for July 5th 2011 well notice it's in what's called the short date format here's the long date format I can take advantage of autofill options by filling the formatting only so you see how it copied the formatting down and there's several other things that we can do uh, for example what if I wanted this to be um, every other day so I'll type in here seven six to a one one now the formatting is in place in that cell in this case when I want to have every other day what I'll do is I'll select both cells and then drag it down to autofill so so show me Monday Wednesday Friday Sunday so on and so forth well what if I wanted this series to be every Monday so in this case Monday will be 7 11 good lucky day it's also my anniversary and now again that I have the series indicated I select both cells in the series and autofill down so I have Monday the 4th Monday the 11th Monday the 18th Monday the 25th etc now let's turn this knowledge into formulas so with a formula the beauty here is that cells that have formulas will update automatically now I'm first going to demonstrate two formulas that require the analysis tool pack to be active and I'm going to show you how to do that I'm going to use the edate function which will increment by a series of months so pointing to my starting cell increment it by one month and a very useful function when we want to increment a series but point to the last day in the month then we use the EOM end of month function now I mentioned that both of these are part of the analysis tool pack if you're using Excel 2007 Excel 2010 don't worry this add-in is activated automatically however if you're using Excel 2003 or earlier you're going to want to go to the tools menu choose add-ins and make sure that there's a check 
mark next to the analysis tool pack. All right, now let's switch back here to Excel 2010. So in this case, let's bring up the function arguments dialog box to increment by a month. In this case, I'm using the uh, E date function. So my starting date that I'm pointing to is this cell. What I want to do is I want to create a formula that will increment it by one month. In other words, increment the month only. So if I wanted to increment by two, I would make that two. And as I filled it down, I would see every other month. So July would become uh, September, which would become November. So it's a very easy uh, function to use. Now, notice that it does return a serial number. So let me show you the danger here. I've moved this uh, clear uh, command over here to my quick access toolbar. I use this quite frequently. So I'm going to clear not just the contents, but also the formatting. So the edate function equals edate. And I'll use Control A to bring up the function arguments dialog box. Here's my starting date the number of months that I want to increment by one in this case. Now here's my result. My result is going to be a serial number. So Excel stores dates as a serial number, but we can format them so that they make sense to us. So in this case, what I'm going to do for this cell is I'm going to use the autofill option to fill the formatting only. And now in this case, I'm going to, instead of just dragging, I'm going to double click to copy that formula down. The beauty here is that if I change my mind, I want to have a different starting date, let's say the first of the year. So January 1st, 2011. Now notice that all the cells that use that uh, a function that use the formula update automatically. The EOM operates in a similar fashion to the EDate. In this case, what it's going to do when we use the EOM function, it's going to return the last day of the month in our series. So in this case, I'm pointing to my starting date, and I want to increment it by one uh, month. And in this case, it's going to return the last day of that month. So notice that we have different days of the month. April has 30 days. May has 30 one. Coming down into next year, we see that February is going to be a leap year. So it's a very, very useful function. Now, what if we want to increment by years? And I get more calls from people on this. I tell them, well, we want to use the date function. And they stop and they say, all right, I'll use the date function and that will work. And then the phone rings. Well, here's what we actually have to do when we want to uh, use this function over here. I want to just bring this function arguments dialog box up here. That, there we go. I say use the date function, and there are three arguments, three required arguments, year, month, and day. What's important is that you must nest inside the date function the year function for the year argument and increment that by one. Use the month function nested inside the date function. Use the day function nested inside. So let me create this from scratch over here. I'll just delete this. I'll leave the formatting in place. So equals date. And what I want to do is bring up the function arguments dialog box. I nest the year function inside the date function. Point to my starting date, close the parentheses, and increment it by one year. In order to get a fully realized date, I must nest inside the month argument, the month function pointing to the cell that is my starting date. And increment uh, by year, I still must nest the day function pointing to the starting date cell inside the date function. So the date function with the year function plus one, month function and day function each nested inside. So that's how that works. Incrementing by days is really simple. I mean, the easiest way to do it is, uh, in this case, if I want to increase it by one week, I can just say plus seven. So I could put that in uh, by 15 if I wanted to have a date that was midway in the month. Very, very simple to use. Now, finally, to wrap this up, one of the great features that we have with the autofill is to fill the week days only. So creating a formula for this is a little tricky. In this case, what we want to do is we want to use an if function, and inside that we want to use the weekday function. Now let me show you how this works. First off, 
the weekday function, when we bring this up, it's going to again return a serial number. So I point to a cell uh, that, and it's going to return a serial number. The second argument, the return type. So it's going to return a number from 1 to 7. Well, that makes sense for, for a weekday. And in this case, you have arguments down here. You have options. The default is that Sunday is going to be day number one. So in this case, I'm pointing to a starting cell, which is a Friday. So notice that the result is six. If Sunday is one, then Friday is going to be six. And the way that I can nest this function so that I get the weekdays only is I use the logical test to say the weekday point into my cell. If it's equal to six, in other words, if it's Friday, then the value of true is add three days to that. So Friday plus three, Saturday, Sunday, Monday will return Monday. If it's any other day, so seven plus one in this case will return one. Two in this case will return three. So that's how we can write a function so that we can increment the weekdays only. So there you've learned some valuable tips on how to use autofill and also how to write formulas so that you can increment a series of dates. In my next lesson, I'm going to show you how to use these same tools to increment times. And I'll look for you in that next lesson.